Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number five in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to learn Fusion 360 or you're going to die trying. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's talk about what I am going to teach you today. Like I mentioned earlier, what I'm going to be teaching you about is how to do 2D sketching in Fusion 360. But before we jump into that, there's a little bit of bookkeeping that we need to do in order to make sure that you are ready for some lessons that are coming up in the next few weeks. What I will be teaching you is I will be teaching you how to use engineering calipers. And so you need to go ahead and order your set of calipers. I have a link in the description below over to Amazon where you can hop over there and buy this same set of calipers that I am using. Here at my location, they're being offered at about $26, uh, 26 uh, US dollars. And you sort of look, you'll find them anywhere 20 to $30. But this is a really nice pair and it's the pair that I'm using. So I recommend that you get these that I am using. So go ahead and order those. And then in a couple of weeks, we'll get to the lesson on how to use them. And then for the remainder of this class, we will be using these calipers calipers for all types of different things. You really have to have calipers if you are going to be doing real engineering design work and they're just useful around the shop anyway. Okay, so enough of the calipers. Let's get back and talk about what I am going to teach you today, which is about doing two dimensional sketching in Fusion 360. And guys, you need to listen to me because if you don't hear anything else, you need to hear this. The battle for Fusion 360 is won or lost at the two-dimensional sketch level. The reason that people give up and fail and can't learn Fusion 360 is they have never really understood the fundamentals of two-dimensional sketching in the software. What people will do is they'll just jump in and start doing all this crazy three-dimensional stuff. And you might be able to kind of try to follow along with them, but you don't understand it and you can't do anything on your own. Why? Because no one ever explains the importance of the fundamentals of two-dimensional sketching. And that's what we are going to start today. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to do several things today. We will be uh, we, we will we will be going through several very important techniques and good design principles that you need to know and understand and be able to do at the two dimensional level. OK, so that's what we're going to do. And it's going to be the next two or three lessons we are going to be working with you to establish these fundamental design principles. And the thing is, it's going to be like you're just going to be sketching these little shapes in two dimensions. It's like, OK, this is going to maybe feel boring for you, but then boom. When we go to 3D, two or three lessons from now, it's just going to all make sense. It's all going to work. It's all going to be easy. Why? Because we mastered the fundamentals at the two-dimensional level. Now, I'm going to tell you that there are three things that we're going to talk about today. And these are the three things that you've probably failed. If you've failed on Fusion 360 in the past, it's probably for one of these three reasons. And we're going to really learn and develop skills in these three areas today in today's lesson. OK, the first is the first key to success in Fusion 360 at the 2D sketch level is you have to be very mindful of your palette. OK, there is a little ribbon of commands across the top of Fusion 360 and you have to be very mindful of it. 
why are you not mindful of it is because Fusion 360 does not work like any of the other Microsoft prod, uh, products that you have used. And what happens is you go into this two-dimensional sketching and you start using your experience base and the techniques that you've developed in other, pro in other programs. They don't work on Fusion 360. So let me show you what I mean. Let's hop back over here and I'm just going to pop open a random program. I'm going to pop open PowerPoint. Okay. How do you do things in PowerPoint? There's really not a palette and not a workflow ribbon that you've got to worry about. And everything that you do is sort of contextually based. What happens is based on the context of what you're doing. And let me kind of show you. So let's just say we're going to draw a square. So we come up here and we get a square. And then what do I do? I want the square here. It's some random position. I point. I click the mouse button down, I drag with the mouse button down, and then I let the mouse button up. And I did not end up with anything. Why did I not end up with anything? Okay, there it is. So I click down, I hold the mouse button down, I drag, and then I let the mouse button up. And I got to make sure that I'm telling it this. Click down, drag, and then let the mouse button up. All right, now I'm not going to ever go back up to my palette. I'm not going to ever go back up to my uh, my ribbon up there. What I'm going to do is if I point at this and click, it selects it. If I click and drag, it moves it. Okay, I click on this one. I can move it. If I want to select them both, I draw a box around them. They're both selected and then I can move both of them or I can come in, I can click and then I can come up to the corner and I can resize. Okay. Or I can resize this way or I, I can resize this way or I can resize this way or I can resize this way. And look, even when I have this selected, I have this little thing and I can rotate it around. You notice how I did all of that. I created I move, I selected, I moved, I resized, I rotated, I did all of that without ever what, without ever having to come up here to the, uh, to the palette or to the ribbon. Why? Because if I point at this, it knows that I'm wanting to select it. So I just click on it. If I point here, it knows that I want to resize. So I just click. Okay. And so when you go to Fusion 360, you start doing those things and it's not going to work. And then you get very frustrated. So the first thing that I say is you have to kind of forget all of that stuff. You have to forget all of that stuff. You have to be very mindful of the palette. If you're going to select something, you've got to go up to the palette, up to the ribbon and say, I want to select something. If you want to resize something, you've got to go up and say, okay, now I'm going to resize. You can't just point and click using Fusion 360. All right, so let's see if we can fire up Fusion 360 and enough of this chit chat. Let's jump in and let's actually start designing some things and developing some good design skills. But let me tell you right up front the three things that you have to do to be successful. I said the first one, you have to be mindful of the palette. The second thing you have to do is you have to be deliberate about two things. You have to be deliberate about dimension and deliberate about position. And you see, we really don't do that in our bad habits that we have developed in Microsoft, in Microsoft products. You see, I just move like this. I'm randomly moving it to random positions that look right to the eye. And then I am randomly resizing things that look right to the eye. And then I can come in and I can make multiple copies. And I think that looks about right there. But you see, it's all eyeballing it. It is not deliberate with respect to position and it's not deliberate with respect to size. So number one, you got to be mindful of the palette. Number two, you've got to be deliberate about dimension and position. And then number three, you have to, before you exit the sketch, before you leave the sketch level, you have to make sure that your sketch is fully constrained. And that's what I will be teaching you today. What does it mean for a sketch to be fully constrained and how do you fully constrain your sketches before you leave? If you will do those three things, you will be well on your way of finally being able to really design your own things in Fusion 360 and getting Fusion 360 to do what you want without a lot of headache and heartbreak. All right.
So, long introduction, now time for us to get busy. So what do we do? We always start in the sketch level. So the sort of design flow or the workflow that I showed you last week in Fusion 360 is you start by drawing a two-dimensional shape and then after you design the two-dimensional shape, you then extrude it into three dimensions. We're not going to be talking about the three-dimensional part today. We're going to be talking about how to make Fusion 360 sing and dance for you at the two-dimensional level. So what do we want to start with? We want to come up here to create. And I guess I should start again, man, I got to stop talking and get on with designing. But one other thing, there is no way for me to change the preferences of my Fusion 360 to create a higher contrast view of the software because this is kind of low contrast which makes it a little bit harder for you to see and I cannot make these fonts bigger there is no way I can make the fonts bigger there is no way that I can make this higher contrast so to compensate for that number one I put a little highlight on my mouse so at least you can follow my cursor because it's got the little highlight thing and then I will say out loud everything that I'm doing because that's one of the other problems with a lot of the lessons that they're doing things and you can't see what they did. You can't see the keyboard shortcut or you can't see where they clicked. I'm going to go slow and I'm going to talk about everything that I do and that way you can you can see it and follow it. And then also I have the highlighted uh, the highlighted mouse. So what's the first thing that we want to do? We always start by creating a what? We start by creating a two dimensional object. So we come up here to create and then we come down and we say create a sketch. All right, now it shows us this, uh, let's see, uh, let me, for some reason that didn't, uh, that didn't give me what I was expecting. And so I'm going to see if I can just escape out of there. I'm going to come to this sort of home view here. Okay, the home view here. And then I'm going to say create and then create a two-dimensional sketch. All right, now what it is showing me is it is showing me the three planes that I can design in. Since we're using a 3D printer, we want to design in the X, Y plane, and then we will extrude into Z. We will extrude into Z, and Z is up. This is RGB red, green, blue is X, Y, Z. And so if we want to do the X, Y plane, if we want to sketch in the X, Y plane, that would be the what? The red, green. And so you can see you've got the red, green that I click on this little square, and that's the one between the red and the green, <clears throat> between the X and the Y, and that will give me a piece of graph paper that I can sketch on in the X, Y plane. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now we're going to go through the basic shapes that you can sketch with. And then I'm going to be showing you as we do these basic sketches to be very deliberate about what two things. I'm going to be very deliberate about dimension <clears throat> and about position. <clears throat> so let's start and just say that we are going to create a circle. Okay, and there's various circles you can play. It just lets you draw things with a different way, different ways, and you can play with those, but any of them will draw a circle, and it's just sort of which one you like. I like a center diameter circle because I start where I want the center to be, and I click, and then I pull out. So first thing, I want to be very deliberate about position, and I'm being very deliberate about position by starting at the origin. And you can see as I get to the origin, it kind of snaps there and it locks on. And so it's not just a random spot. It is being very deliberate. This is on the origin. Now, let me show you the first thing that's different from the Microsoft product. In Microsoft, you click you drag and you release the click. In Fusion 360, you click release where you want to start it. You move the mouse and then you click again. Okay, so it's a little bit different. So I'm going to start at the origin. I'm going to click, okay, release my hand. My hand's off the mouse. Then I'm going to pull the mouse. <clears throat> now, I have been what? I have been deliberate about position. It's at the origin. Now I need to be what? 
deliberate about dimension. And you don't just go like a cowboy here and eyeball it in. What do you do? You give it a dimension. Do you see that little blue box? That little blue box is the dimension, but you don't adjust it like this. Oh, I want it at 100. Let me see if I can get it at 100. Oh, it's 90, 90, uh, 102.6. Uh, That's close. No. What do you do? You type in, I want a diameter of 100. And boom, I have a circle that I have been very deliberate about position, and I have been very deliberate about size. The position is at the origin and the size is 100. And then what I want you to see is I want you to look here at this sketch. You see this little sketch icon? What does it have? It has a tiny little lock. What does that tiny little lock mean? That tiny little lock means that my design is fully constrained. There is nothing ambiguous about it. It's telling me, buddy, I know exactly where you want that circle, and I know exactly what size you want it. And so if I finish the sketch now, okay, sketch two is finished, it's fully constrained, then I could come to the 3D level and I could start doing whatever I wanted to. But we don't want to work in 3D at this point. We're going to go back and continue to work on our sketch. Now I finished the sketch. How do I go back to the sketch? Also. I need to show you something here, like if you extrude what happens a lot of times, and you'll also be deliberate when you extrude, don't just pull it up and down, eyeball it, type in the number, I'm gonna say 25 millimeters high, and boom, there it is. One of the things that happens is after you extrude, Fusion 360 makes your sketch disappear which is a little bit annoying. To make your sketch where you can still see it, you come over where it says sketch and that little eye, you click and it turns it back on. And that way you can still see your sketch. But I really don't want to be extruding right now and so I'm just gonna back up and I'm gonna undo that. But you see, when you're in the 3D view here, you can turn the sketch off or turn the sketch on. And I really like having the sketch on because it helps me remember what my fundamental shapes are. Okay, so now how do we go back to the sketch level? I am going to right, I, I'm going to, is that a right or a left? I am going to right mouse click, and then I'm going to say edit sketch. So I point at the name of the sketch, sketch two, I right mouse click, I say edit sketch, and now boom, I am back in my sketch view, and you can see that this is fully constrained, everything's happy. The other way you can see that it's constrained is it turned from blue to black. When it's black, that means that that element is constrained. Now, let's go and let's talk about being deliberate about the palette, okay? Being deliberate about the palette. I want to delete this. So if I'm gonna delete it, I need to select it. I come up here and I say select. You need to do that because if you are sitting here with this tool and you think, okay, I wanna delete it, so I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna click on it to select it. Well, I didn't select it. I am trying to add a dimension to it, okay? So that's one of the biggest problems and biggest hangups in Fusion 360 is you don't get to select something just because you point at it and collect it, uh, click on it. You have to do what? You have to be mindful of your palette. Mr. Fusion 360, I would like to select something. Okay, he gives me the select tool. I come down here, I select it, okay? I can select it like that, and then I'm going to right mouse click, and then I'm gonna delete it. Okay, and it wants me, now it says, what do you want to delete? It wants to be sure, so I'll click on it again, and then I'll say, okay, and boom, I deleted it. So you see, even things like selecting and deleting are not as straightforward as what you've gotten accustomed to, but if you're deliberate about it, it will work okay. So first sketch was very successful. So now let me make a second sketch. I'm gonna make a circle again. I'm gonna come down here to about minus 75, and I am going to click. I'm gonna drag, and now I'm gonna tell it I want it to be 100. Okay, and then I'm going to click enter and boom, I have a circle. I have a circle. I was very deliberate about what? I was very deliberate about dimension. 
What was I not very deliberate about? I was not very deliberate about position. I kind of pointed at minus 75, but is that really at minus 75 or is that at minus 74.999? It's just kind of a random position. And what is the result of that? The result of that is the circle is what color? The circle is blue. That means it is not what? It is not fully constrained. And if we look at our sketch up here, our little sketch icon is is a pencil, it's not a lock. What does that mean? It means the sketch is not fully constrained. Why is it not fully constrained? Fusion 360 knows exactly what size I want that circle, but it doesn't know exactly where it is. So if I get select here and click on it, you see it could be anywhere. It's floating around in space. It could just float off anywhere. I was not deliberate about position. So how are we deliberate about position? <coughs> I'm going to show you the way that you can really understand it and the experts just do all this crazy stuff and they're doing things that they know intu intuitively to do but they're not explaining it to you and so this is not the fastest way to do it but this is the method where you can understand and where you can always do things that are fully constrained and so what am I going to do? I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to select. I'm going to select it and then uh, let's see, select it. I think I might be able to just hit delete and yeah, I can just delete it with the delete key after I've selected it. Now, this is the way I would draw a circle away from the origin and get things fully constrained. And this is the way I like to do it. I'm gonna draw a line. So I come up here to line. If you don't see line there, you can look under create and say create a line. Then. I want to create a construction line. A physical line would be something that's part of your design. A construction line is just a line that helps you draw. It's not part of your design. And so I come over here to my sketch palette. And when you say line type, I want to come here to construction line. And now I'm going to start at a very deliberate point deliberate about position. I'm starting where at the origin. I click, I look, take my hand off, and now I pull it over here to about 75. And then what do I do to be deliberate in this dimension box? The length of the line is 75, and then I click enter. All right. Now, what do I have? I have a construction line that's along the x-axis and it's 75 millimeters away from the origin. And now I have a point that I can deliberately design around. So now if I come, I get my circle, I come here and I go to that point that I put there. I go to that point that I put there. I click, I take my hand off. I come up, I take my hand off, and now I type in the radius I want, 100, and then I click enter, and then boom. Now, what is it? If we come up here, this is fully constrained. Now, a little thing that happened to me there, I wasn't paying attention, that when I drew this circle, when I drew the circle on my sketch palette, I had the line type set to what? To construction, but I wanted a real circle. So how do I fix that? I say I want to select, come up to my palette, select, come down here, select by clicking on it, coming over here and turning off construction, and now I get a real circle, and boom, still this design is fully constrained. All right, so what if I didn't want it on the x-axis? What if I wanted it up here? Well, let me come up here. I'm going to delete. I'm going to delete. We're just going to start over. So what if I did that same thing again? I want a line. I wanted a construction line. I come here at the origin. I come up to here. And then I, uh, I, uh, I clicked before I put a dimension. And I should have put the dimension before I clicked. But what do I do? I can come in and I can add a dimension. Do you see this tool? sketch dimension. If it's not up there for you, you could look at it here and it is sketch dimension. I can click on that line. I click on it, take my finger off the click, come over here, come over here, take my hand off. And now I can give that a length or no, that tells me the length. And then I can say, I want that to be a hundred. All right. So you see, I can set the dimension 
after I make the line by using the dimension tool. And so let me do that again just to make sure that you see that because this is a very important thing. So I'm going to click on the dimension. And I'm going to say delete, right? I'm going to come back to the dimension tool. I am going to click on what I want the dimension of click release. I click release. I drag down and you can see that it's telling me that that is 100. I could say 150. No, this it's going to make me hit enter or yeah, hit enter. And now there is the dimension. I can say 125 in that little box and then enter. Boom, it's 125. Now I've been very deliberate about the what, the dimension of this line and the starting point of this line. Now I come in, I get my circle and I'm going to go off of <clears throat> line type, this uh, off of construction line. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to click. I'm going to drag and then I'm going to make this 50 this time and then I'm going to click enter. Okay, boom. Now, what is the problem? I was very deliberate about the radius of the circle. I was very deliberate about the position of the circle. I was very deliberate about the length of this line. But what is the problem? The problem is this is not anchored anywhere. You see this can float around because I didn't lock it over to the x-axis or the y-axis. So right when I did it the first time that line was locked to the x-axis or I could lock it to the y-axis. But if I just draw a line out here, the position isn't specified. I have not been deliberate. So how would we do that? Okay, how would we do that? Let me uh, come back over here, get select. Let me select all this nonsense, click the delete key and it's gone. The way you would do that, like let's say if we wanted it here at minus 100 in X and 100 in Y right there, what would I do? This is the way I would do it. I would get my construction line. I would say I want it to be a construction line. I would click deliberately on the origin. I would come out here and I'm going to, again, we don't want to eyeball it. I want to say deliberately it is 100 from the keyboard and then enter. All right, so there it is at 100. Now this is an anchor that I can go from. I'm going to get line again. I'm going to click on that anchor and I'm going to come up here. Okay, and now again, what am I going to do? I'm going to be deliberate about dimension by typing in 100. All right, boom. So now I have a point here that I can design from. If I click on circle, and again, I don't want a construction circle. I want a real circle, so I turn this construction icon off. I click, I come out here, and then uh, I click enter. Uh, I click enter again and then look at that. Okay, I was hoping that wouldn't constrain. I was trying to do a bad example, but it did go ahead and take that as a dimension. So let me take that off. The better way to do it is you click on that construction point you created. You click once, you drag, and now you type in, I want a diameter of 50 and then enter and boom, what? I am fully constrained and I have a circle out here. Now this has been a lot, a lot of talking. And it, the thing you got to see though is nobody does this. And when you don't do this, you're going to end up in just a world of hurt and a world of nightmare and all types of problems when you get to actually doing the 3D part of it. Why? Because you didn't fully constrain your sketch. You were not deliberate about position and about dimension. Okay, but if you will do this technique and always fully constrain your sketches, you will just have fun and you will be able to make Fusion 360 sing and dance for you. Okay, <clears throat> there are other shapes that we can do. So I can take this and let's just say that I'm going to click on that and then delete. Let's go through some of these shapes. I did a line. And then besides the line I showed you, you could make it a construction line or you could make it a line that's part of your design. I can also do a rectangle so I can come here and then I can start here because if I start here, I will be very deliberate about what about position. And so rather than drawing my construction lines again, also I want to show you what I'm doing 
do you see how it zooms depends on where you are? Like let's say here I'm losing the top of my view. So I come here and with the mouse wheel, I zoom out. And then I come up here and with my mouse wheel, I zoom in. So you see how you can kind of pan the thing to where you want, depending on where the mouse is when you zoom in and zoom out. And so I want a little more room up here. So I'll zoom out like that. So now I'm going to make a rectangle. I click that I want a rectangle. I come down here. I click, I take my hand off and then I come up here. Now with a rectangle, I have two dimensions. And so you see that it's giving me the horizontal dimension first. So I will type in 100 like that. And then I think that if I click enter, the problem is you see, I set that one, but I didn't really set this one. I set this one, but I really didn't set this one because once I clicked entered, it took it and this dimension was never set. So when I look at this, you look over here and what's the problem? It's not fully constrained. I was deliberate about position. I was deliberate about one dimension, but I wasn't deliberate about what? I wasn't deliberate about the other dimension. And so what could happen is you see this could be anything, all right? This one cannot be anything because I set this at 100. So what do I need to do? I need to come like this, come over here, click on either one of these, and then I could say I want that to be 50 and then enter. And you can also grab and move these out of the way like that. Now I am what? I am fully constrained because every dimension and every position has been completely defined. Does that make sense? Let me show you, I think, a better way to do that. I like to put the dimensions in before I click enter. And so what was that nonsense? Okay, so I'm going to select this, or I'm going to select this uh, box here. I'm going to delete it, that rectangle. And I deleted more than I wanted to. I did not want to delete my construction line, so I think I'll just delete this. I could have just undone, you know, I could have just undone. All right, so now I'm going to come, I'm going to get the rectangle tool. I'm going to come here, uh, you know, take my hand off. And now this, I'm going to say I want to be 50. And then maybe I can tab by hitting the tab on the keyboard. It'll take me to the other one. And I want that to be 25, say, and then enter. And then what do I have? Boom, fully constrained. Now it looks like... <clears throat> uh, it looks like I typed that in wrong and I put it at two. And so how am I going to do that? I'm going to double click on that dimension and I'm going to make that 20 like that. Okay, so that's 20 and that's 50 and that is fully constrained. Does that make sense? Okay. By using these good principles, believe me, when you go and you start operating in the 3D level, everything is gonna work very good for you. So let's go ahead and get rid of that because we really don't want a rectangle there. And I'm sure there's an easier way to delete it, but I just don't wanna delete that construction line like I did, like I did last time. Okay, so we have done a line, a rectangle, we've done a circle. All right, how about an arc? Okay, how about an arc? And if I do an arc, I can do a three-point arc. And the way that works is I am going to, well, I hope that none of this has been hidden behind me here as I've been doing this. Hopefully you've been able to see everything. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to click on the origin. Boom, one click. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on that construction point I have out there, click. And then I'm going to come out here and I am going to click there. And so, boom, I have created an arc. The first position of the arc is very well specified. The second position of the arc, arch, arc, is very well, uh, that's funny, arc or arch? Arc, okay, it's an arc, uh, is very well specified. But why is my sketch not constrained? My sketch is not constrained because this point up here could kind of be anywhere. 
right? You see how this can move up and down. And so this thing is not defined. This thing is not defined. Well, what I can do is I can come over here and I can create a new construction line and we will make it a construction line and I will bring it halfway or let's see. Yeah, I will bring it halfway over here. And how do I make it halfway? Half of 100 is 50, like that. Okay. And then what I can do is I can bring this point, hopefully. I guess I'd do it from up here and bring that right to there. And that didn't do it. So I'm not going to really talk about constraints today, but I have to show you one constraint that will fix this problem. So I come up to constraints. And I'm going to say that I want two points to be coincident. I want this point, this point to be coincident with this point, or this point coincident with that point. Okay, there it is. I don't know why I had to click that a few times. So I took that point and I forced it to be coincident with this point, and then boom, I have an arc and I am fully constrained. Now, it's kind of like one of those little annoying things, but sometimes this constraint thing is a little bit hard to do. So I'm just going to like completely click off of this. Uh, I'm completely clicked off of the design and I say I want to put a coincident constraint and then I come here and I click on that point. Okay and then I click on that point and they are constrained together. So I don't know, sometimes you got to click kind of carefully, but boom, now you see that that arc is fully constrained and I have a sketch that is fully constrained. So boom, that is kind of neat. So let's go ahead and let's delete this and let's see what else we have. We have a rectangle, a circle, an arc, a polygon. Okay, now the circumscribed polygon means that it goes outside the circle. The inscribed polygon means that it's inside the circle. It's just a geometry term. Either one will work, but let's just make it a circumscribed polygon. And then I'm going to be very deliberate about what? I'm going to be very deliberate about position. And so I'm going to start here. I'm going to click and then I'm going to drag. Now, I have to warn you about something. You see, this is set as six sides, and so I can, it's wanting me to give a dimension. So, okay, I'll go ahead and give it a dimension of 75, okay? But now, I got to warn you, this is six sides. If I just click enter, it's very hard to edit or change the number of sides. Okay, you see how it says six? Before you click enter, you've got to tell it how many sides you want. I click tab. After my dimension, I click tab. And let's say I want eight sides. And then I go boom. Okay. And I had this thing set. I had this thing set as construction. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to select it. Okay. And then I'm going to say, no, I don't want it to be construction. All right. So there it is. I was very deliberate about position. I was very deliberate about dimension. I was very deliberate about number of sites. And let me just show you. So like if I come here and click on it and I say, uh, let's say, is there an edit in there anywhere? Okay, you see there's not really an edit. So it's very hard to change the number of sites. If I wanted to change the dimension of the site, I could come here with my dimension tool and I could click and it comes out and, you know, it says, uh, no, it's actually not going to make it easy. Oh, it already has the dimension here. So there where it's 75, I could say 50. I didn't need to add another dimension. I just needed to edit the dimension that was there. So I've been very deliberate about position. I've been very deliberate about size. <clears throat> and what is my problem? It is not constrained. Why is it not constrained? I'm going through these because these are the things that will drive you nuts trying to figure out. So I'm showing you how to constrain these different shapes. Somebody tell me why this isn't constrained. 
because, uh, let's see, because, you see, let me, let me select it, okay, because it can spin around, okay, you see, so I have not told it exactly whether I want it like this, or I want it like this, or I want it like this, I haven't told it. Well, there are different ways that I could constrain this. And again, this lesson is not about constraints, but I'm just showing, I'm just realizing that in order to fully define things, to fully constrain things, we do have to know a little bit about constraints. Well, one thing I could do is I could select this one bar and I could come up here and I could say, make that horizontal or vertical. And now boom, once that one became horizontal, the sketch is fully constrained. Another thing I could have done, let me undo that. Another thing I could have done would be, let's say that I uh, said, make the things collinear, or make the things, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, make the things, let's see if I could do it collinear. I want this point, you see this point, I want that collinear, right? I'm on collinear with what? With this line. And that one didn't work. Okay, there it is. So I made this collinear with this. And that then <clears throat> has fully constrained it. But actually, I don't like it. I don't want it like that. But I did get it fully constrained, just not fully constrained in a way that I want. Another thing I could do is I could say, take this and I could put a constraint and make it parallel with what? With this down here and boom, now I'm fully constrained. So you see, you use these constraints to solve these problems on these more complicated things. Now in next week's lesson, we're going to go in and we're really, really, really going to understand the constraints, but I'm just kind of giving you a little bit of an introduction to them because it's necessary in order for us to fully constrain some of these uh, more complicated shapes. All right, we've done line, we've done rectangle, we've done circle, we've done arc. You can imagine ellipses. Uh, okay, now we can do, next up we will do an ellipse. And with an ellipse, you need to start at a central point and then you need to have the axis point. So you need the sort of center and then like if you think of a football, the tip of the football. So let's see if I can draw that. And let me put it in an angle to make it a little bit more interesting. Now in this case, who is your friend, a construction line. And so I will come over here. I will say I want a construction line. I'm deliberate about starting at the origin and I want to go up to where I'm going to say 150. So I type in 150 and then enter and then boom, I have a construction line. I'm going to move this out of the way. <clears throat> now let's make our ellipse. So we're gonna come up and say, create an ellipse. Where do I wanna start? I want to start at the center. So click, take my hand off. Now I need the tip of the football is going to be here. Click, that's done. And now I need to come down and how thick do I want the football to be? Let's say that we want the football to be 95. And then with 95, enter. Boom, fully constrained. Okay, but I did not want it to be a construction ellipse. So I will come over here and I'll turn that off and then enter. And then boom, that thing is fully constrained. So as you get to these more complicated shapes, it's a little bit harder. But believe me, if you don't solve it here, you're going to have problems when you get to your 3D extrusion. So always get it fully constrained here. And in this lesson, I'm kind of showing you how to fully constrain every one of these different shapes. A slot. Ah, okay, we can do a slot. So if we're going to do a slot, we are going to start by getting rid of this nonsense. Okay, get rid of all that nonsense. <clears throat> I'll leave that construction line. I might need it later. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rectangle. I'll start here deliberate about position, come out, and then I will say that I want it 100 wide. I click tab to go to my other size box. I will say 75 and then click enter. And darn it, I keep getting this construction business, which I really don't want. So I will make that not a construction line. Now we are going to do a what? We are going to do a slot. 
And so I'm going to say create a slot and uh, <clears throat> center to center slot. That sounds, uh, that sounds pretty good. I'm going to do a center to center slot and I can come here. I think uh, I can come, uh, I can come here and come over to here and then come down. And then that is not going to be fully, uh, fully constrained because I didn't give it any, uh, anything to grab onto. I didn't give it anything to grab onto. And so I need to inside this box get two, uh, I need to get two lines inside this box. So two points inside this box. So I have something to grab onto for the slot. And so we'll just pretend that that never happened and we'll come up and say, okay, where do I want this thing? Well, what I can do is I can come and I can make another construction line. And this time, indeed, I want it to be a construction line. And what I want you to see is I want in the center, you see when I'm in the center of that line, I get the triangle. Now I'm in the center and I want to come over here to the center. And now I have a construction line on the center. And then what I also want to do is I want to come from here and I'm going to come down and make another one like that. Okay, now I can come from here out and from here out with a certain dimension. And so I'm going to click, I'm going to come out, <clears throat> I'm going to come out how far? 25 and then enter. And then I am going to make another line. I'm going to start in the middle. I'm going to come out how far? 25, enter. And notice how I'm still fully constrained because I did everything clicking to things that were already there. Now I can draw the slot from this point to this point. So I come down and I say create a slot center to center and I want to start here, click, let up, come over here, click, let up. And now I just have to go up. And if I specify a thickness here, let's say 25, like that. Oh, that was not good. Okay. 25 and enter. And there it is fully constrained. I didn't want it to be a construction. Turn the construction nonsense off. Okay. <clears throat> what I, am I? I have a rectangle. It has a slot in it and it's fully constrained. And then if I said finish sketch, I could come over here and then in my 3D view, I could select this and then I could go up 15 and then I have a nice little plate with a nice slot in it. Does that make sense? Look at that. Boom. Okay. So now let's go back and let's, let's undo that. We don't want to be doing any of that. And then we're going to go back to the sketch level. And I'm going to say edit sketch again. And here we are. Okay. So I'm going to select all of this and then I'm going to delete. And now let's see what else we can do. I made a slot, a spline. Uh, I don't want to do a spline because really to do a spline, you've got to really understand constraints. So that would be better when we are doing constraints in order to get it fully constrained. But a spline is just a curve line. We'll learn how to do that. Uh, we can do a conic curve. Okay, let me go ahead and do that one. And for a conic curve, uh, you can imagine that for a conic curve, you're going to need a start point, an end point, and a peak. And so here I have a start point. I have, uh, you didn't see that. Man, I hope I haven't been hiding or blocking your view on a lot of this stuff. I have a start point. I have an end point. I'm going to need a height point. And so I'm going to go ahead and do a construction line where remember this little point here that I had, I'm going to start there. I'm going to come up how far I'm going to come up 75 and then enter. Now I am going to make that a construction line. Do you notice that when I want it to be a construction line, it's not. And when I don't want it to be a construction line, it is. Okay. So now let's come in and let's do our cone, our conic curve. All right. So where do we start? We start here at this construction point, place first point on the conic curve, okay? And then the second point on the conic curve is over here. And then the third point is right here. 
And then actually, interestingly enough, I can set this as a dimension. So you see, I could say one, it doesn't like that. I guess like 0.9, all right, it's, it likes that. Or I could say 0.8 and it likes that. And then boom, fully constrained. Why is it fully constrained? Because the starting point was a defined point the ending point was a defined point and the height was a point. I'd imagine just clicking and making the height go to a construction point, but it wanted to dimension. But in either case, we got the thing fully constrained, which is what we wanted to do. <clears throat> you can play around with text. I don't like text very much. It's kind of hard to, it becomes a little more loosey goosey and you're de defining the position of the box, but you can play with text if you want. Let's do mirror real quick. Okay, let's do mirror real quick. What I can do is I can select mirror and mirrors the sketch curves about a selected line. Okay, so let's just do that. I'm gonna say I want to mirror. Well, what do I wanna mirror? I wanna mirror this. Okay, let's see how I do that. Maybe I need to select it first. Oh, okay, no, it's over here. I'm sorry, I've got this little dialog box. So let's just completely start over. So I'm gonna say, I want to mirror, and then I have this. What do I wanna mirror? I wanna mirror this guy. And then I want to mirror it about what? About this line and then boom, it is mirrored and it is fully constrained. Or I could have a circle up here, okay? And I'll make that 25, okay? Circle is fully constrained because it was centered on this point. I can select the circle, I can say mirror, and then what do I want to mirror? I want to mirror the circle, I want to mirror it about what? I want to mirror it about this and then boom, now look, I am still fully constrained. Why am I still fully constrained? Because this mirror, even though this doesn't have a construction line over here, it is mirrored about this point. Now, if I come down here and I change this dimension to 150, what's gonna happen? Boom, all those other things that were referenced to that are gonna change. All right, let's see what else we have. <clears throat> a couple of other <clears throat> real quick things that we need to do. I'm going to do one more, which is the circular pattern. And so I'm going to come here, get rid of all of this nonsense. <clears throat> I'm going to give myself one construction line. Click at the origin, come out 150, enter, got myself a construction line. I'm going to put a circle on it, click, drag, make it 100, enter, make it a real circle by turning off the construction. All right, and now let's see if we can get this. <clears throat> so what I wanna do is I wanna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <clears throat> I wanna have eight of those circles in a circle. And so what I can do is I can select this and I can say create a circular pattern. What do I want to make a circular pattern out of that? What is the center point? So I'm gonna click up here and say, this is the center point. Okay. And then uh, I want this. All right, sometimes this is just confusing. So let's start again. Nothing is selected and I'm gonna say circular pattern. The object that I want is this object. The center point that I want is here. Okay, now I wanna go all the way around and then I want eight of them. Okay, and look at that, boom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if I click okay, look at that, fully constrained. Now that is very powerful. That's a very powerful tool. Okay, now let me go back and do something that I think is even uh, even slicker than that. I, uh, I need to just, uh, let me get rid of these real quick. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this, but we're just gonna brute force it here. Okay, so we're gonna come back again and we're gonna create a pattern 
And what do we want to create a pattern of? We want to create a pattern of this object. And then we want to create it around this center point. And then we want eight of them. But this time we want to suppress. So I click suppress and watch this. I can make them all except that one. Boom. Look at that. I can create a pattern with missing elements. How cool is that? So let me just show you kind of the type of thing that you can start doing with this, just how quickly you can go from mastering the 2D sketching to do some really cool 3D things. So I am going to select it all. I'm going to delete. I will create a construction line. Click, come out to, let's say, uh, let's say 125 like that. Enter. And then I've got my construction line. Click on it. Come over here. Make it a construction line. And then I think I'm going to make a circle. So I will come here and I will click, pull. And let's say I'm going to make that one 400 like that. And then enter. All right. And I am fully constrained here as I'm going along. Now I'm going to come to this point. I'm going to put a circle on that. So I will choose the circle tool, click, drag, and then be mindful. I'm going to make this, let's say, 75. Enter. Look at this. I am still fully constrained. Now I'm going to take my friend this one and I'm going to come up and I am going to create a circular pattern and then what do I want to create a circular pattern of this one what do I want to go around I want to go around the origin how many do I want I want eight okay and then I'm going to click okay boom fully constrained all right now I'm just going to say finish sketch and I'm going to come up here and now I'm in the 3d view I always want to see the sketch so I'm going to make sure that I have the sketch on and then I'm going to come like this. All right, what am I going to do? I am going to select these eight objects. I'm holding the shift down so it will continue to shift them, uh, continue to select them, all eight of those objects. And then I am going to say do an extrusion. I'm going to extrude by 50. Okay, 50 millimeters. Ah, I'm going to do more than that. I'm going to do 150 being deliberate about dimensions, enter, and then make sure that I can see the sketch, select this, and then I am going to extrude it by how much? I am going to extrude it by 50, okay, and then okay, and then boom. Look at this super cool little 3D, almost looks like a, almost looks like a Lego, doesn't it? I'm going to select the orbit tool and kind of look around it and then look at that. That is really neat. But now let me show you kind of like what is really, really slick about doing things with constraints. I can come back here and if I want to do something different, I can just come back to the sketch level and then I select sketch. And for some reason it is not wanting to let me. Okay. Edit sketch. And then I come here. What if I take this, okay, and then I'll pull this dimension out here. You see, I could make this 500. And then when I make this 500, you see the whole thing, the whole thing is fixed now. You see, I changed it just by editing a parameter in the sketch. Or I could come back to sketch and I could say uh, edit sketch. And I could make this one, this 75. Okay. I could make that 50. So I could make those small. All right. And then click, oops, that was a big mistake. Okay. Let's make that 50. Enter. Now they're smaller. And then I could come to this construction line. And I'm just pulling the dimension down here. Uh, there's the dimension. Okay. And so I could make that, let's make that 175 like that. And then everything goes out 
and then I come over here, finish sketch, and then boom, you see how easy it is now to modify this complicated 3D object just by playing with my what? My fully constrained 2D sketch. And so that is pretty neat. All right, guys, I think we have done a whole lot of really cool things here. And I hope that this was not too boring for you, but I've shown you all the two diff all the different two dimensional objects you can create and how to create them in a manner that they are fully constrained okay now next week what we're going to learn is we are going to learn <clears throat> about over here all of these different constraints and how to use them because primarily i've been drawing individual shapes very deliberate about position and very deliberate about dimensions, but I haven't been building more complicated objects. And to build more complicated objects and to be able to fully constrain them, you have to really <clears throat> understand all of these constraints. Constraints can be your best friend or your constraints can be your worst nightmare. And one of the reasons that most people give up on Fusion 360 just right at the get-go is because when you're doing things in Fusion 360, it puts constraints in there that you don't know about. And then when you try to edit your drawing, you can't edit it. Why? Because there's hidden constraints that were put in there. So we have to understand constraints. We have to understand the constraints that Fusion 360 puts in, how to get rid of those constraints if we want to, and how to add constraints to more complicated 2D designs where we can get our models, our sketches fully constrained before we move on. <clears throat> well, guys, this has been a little bit of a lesson, but this, this lesson and the next lesson are going to be probably the most important lessons in this whole series. And if you can understand what I've shown you today and you can understand the next left lesson, then things are going to get real fun real fast. And what this is five, six, lesson seven things should get really, really fun. So guys, you need to go ahead and you need to order your calipers with the link down below after we do the next few lessons we'll be getting back to the 3d printer and when we start using the 3d printer again you're going to need these calipers because these calipers will be used in these lessons to tweak up and fine tune our 3d printer and it will be also be used for us to start understanding design rules that we're going to start designing not just by drawing but designing to design rules and those design rules will depend on the particular capabilities of our printer so as we move Move forward you're going to really need those calipers <clears throat> okay guys if you enjoyed this video make sure to give us a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to the channel already be sure to subscribe and then leave a comment down below because when you leave a comment that helps us with the old youtube juice right and the bet the more comments we get the more thumbs up we get the more people that youtube will offer this video to and that's important because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.